Do you love stories of families that stick together through thick and thin and care unconditionally about each member? If yes, then this story is not for you. You must have seen supportive and loving families, but the Willoughbys have a totally different story. They have hidden away from the modern world in their old-fashioned home. Yep, it's actually old-fashioned. Their legacy of tradition, creativity, and courage went down from generation to generation, just like their unique facial hair, except for the current generation. Now, as much as this couple love each other, they hate someone else's presence, even that of their own kids. After a few months of their marriage, Tim was born into this world. He's a very unlucky child who got parents with no love left for him. And poor Tim also got siblings to take care of. That's his younger sister Jane who loves singing and the twin brothers both named Barnaby. The twins may seem weird, but they're total geniuses and they love inventing things. Together, they're hardly surviving the unfortunate life of being neglected by their parents. They don't send the kids to school or let them follow their passion. They don't provide the kids with basic needs like enough food or clothes. The poor Barnaby twins take turns to wear a sweater when they're cold. The Willoughby's kids starve every night while waiting for leftovers. The young siblings beg Tim to do something about dinner. Poor Tim goes to ask his selfish parents for some food, but they don't care at all. While they're scolding Tim, Jane steals the meatloaf. The parents blame Tim for it and put him in the dark coal bin. He's been there many times because he asked for the basic needs of life. Tim just sits on a pile of coal and goes through the family album. He wishes his parents were like the old Willoughbys, who were great scientists and philosophers, and most importantly, they used to eat together with their family. Unfortunately, the life of the Willoughbys is about to get worse. A stranger leaves a suspicious box at their doorstep. The Barnaby twins and Jane sneak out to see what's inside the box. Jane believes it may be a little beast, as written in fantasy books, but it was more problematic than that. Tim can hear his siblings screaming. He rushes out of the chimney and climbs to the library. Something's crawling among the books, and Jane is trying to catch it. It's the worst Tim can expect. It's a baby girl! Their parents hate kids, and they'll punish the Willoughbys for bringing another one. Tim warns Jane to get rid of the baby as soon as possible, but she doesn't want to. While they were quarreling, the baby sneaks into the corridor. She causes a mess around the house, and then she crawls inside the living area. The parents get really fierce to see the baby and choose a cruel punishment for the Willoughbys. The innocent kids are kicked out of the house. They can't come back until they get rid of the baby. Jane has read thousands of fantasy books and she believes in finding the perfect home for the baby. According to her, it should be at the other end of the rainbow. The Willoughbys have never stepped out of the house and find this adventure quite tough. They struggle in crossing the roads and cause many accidents. Finally, they reach the end of the rainbow. Actually, it's just colorful smoke coming out of the candy factory. The kids are too innocent to understand reality. Regardless of the warning sign, they enter the factory lawn and leave the baby on the doorstep. Jane wants to name the kid and Tim suggests the word Ruth, because the Willoughbys have to ruthlessly abandon the baby. On their way back, Jane thinks about the wonderful factory Ruth gets to live in. She wishes they were orphans too and could get a better home. Jane shares her idea with Tim and he loves it. Of course, they can't kill adults but they can put them in deadly circumstances. To execute their plan, the Willoughbys choose the most dangerous places in the world. Boiling volcanoes, acidic rivers, and unclimbable mountains. Tim combined all these places to design an adventure map. He makes a fake brochure and sends it to his parents. Their parents have never been on an adventure, and they want to have some time away from their kids. In short, they fell into the trap. However, they're afraid the kids will destroy the house, so they hire a nanny. But the cheapest one doesn't have any qualifications or experience. Unknown to this, the Willoughbys can't believe their plan succeeded and their parents are gone. They're orphans now with a free will to do anything. They run around the house and play with all the things which their parents never let them touch. They also got a chance to get on the bed for the first time in their lives. The fun ends soon because the Willoughbys are hungry. Tim, the eldest, is in charge of the house now. He assures his siblings of a hearty meal and sets up the dining table. Unfortunately, there's no food in the house 
and Tim puts the old spoiled lobster on the table. Jane and the Barnaby twins refuse to eat and decide to search for food themselves. Tim warns them of the dangers outside the house and stops them from going. Before they can decide their next step, Linda, the nanny, comes over. She seems friendly and gets along with Jane. Meanwhile, Tim can't trust someone so easily. His traumatic childhood has made him quite insecure. Linda sings with Jane and also does her hair. Moreover, she prepares fresh meals for the children. All seem to be fond of her except Tim. Linda assumes that Tim must be missing his loving parents, so she handles him kindly. Linda assists Tim on eating several times, but he refuses and pushes away the food. It hits Linda's face and she puts Tim on a timeout. The Willoughbys are surprised that Tim isn't sent to the coal bin like always. Hearing this, Linda goes down to see the coal bin. She can't believe that some parents can actually put their kids in such a harsh place. Seeing her caring nature, Jane also confesses what they did to Ruth. Linda gets worried and rushes to the candy factory. The owner, Commander Melanoff, orders them to leave immediately, but Linda isn't going back till she finds the baby. Ruth is roaming around the factory and eating unhealthy amount of candy. Melanoff rushes to turn down the machine so Ruth doesn't get hurt. Despite his efforts, Ruth falls towards the grinding machine, but Linda saves her in time. She feeds her porridge and lets Melanoff share his story. He had thought that some angels had left the baby at his doorstep. Ruth wasn't easy to handle and Melanoff decided to call the orphanage, but he hung up in between. He's gotten attached to the adorable baby and wants to live the rest of his life in bringing up Ruth. The candy factory was definitely the best home for the baby. After the reassurance, Linda and the Willoughbys decide to leave. On their way home, Tim shares his candy with Linda and expresses his gratitude. He realized that good people still exist and they get back home. Linda gets a message from the Willoughby's parents. They have survived half of the adventures but ran out of money. To fund their trip, they have decided to sell the house and order Linda to get rid of the children. Tim steals Linda's phone and shows the message to his siblings. They assume that Linda's involved with their parents and they must protect themselves. In the evening, the company agent put the for sale sign on the house and the Willoughby's couldn't sleep after that. They must prepare to scare away the buyers, but before that, Tim needs to do another thing. He calls the orphanage services and complains about Linda. The next morning, a bunch of different buyers come to see the house, but the Willoughby's have surprises for them. Electric wires on the doorknob, random punches out of the wall, sinking holes in the ground, and these are the traps set up by the Willoughby's, which send the buyers into the coal bin. They all leave in anger, but there's one more to tackle. The perfect family. They love each other so much that everything seems fine to them. None of the traps can scare them away. When the Willoughby's give up, they see the buyer's family running away from the library. Tim and his siblings get in to check it themselves. The library looks like a haunted room with numerous candles, which are blown away all at once. Then, a scary monster jumps out of nowhere, and the Willoughby's tremble in fear. Thankfully, it's not a monster, it's Linda. She also wanted to help the kids. The Willoughby's apologize for their behavior and hug Linda. What a heartwarming sight. But not for long. The orphanage services have received Tim's report and they break into the house. Linda tries to run away with the kids, but the service officers surround them from all sides. They recognize Linda because she was also once in the orphanage, but she ran away. She always wanted to help other orphans, but unfortunately, the Willoughby's, whom she loved so much, deceived her. After knowing about the complaint, Linda runs away crying. The children are taken into the orphanage. They get adopted by different families. The Barnaby twins are taken in by a modern family who keeps them busy on the internet and their creativity is dying. Jane is given to a family who finds peace in songs, but Jane has lost her own will to sing. And Tim, he has been adopted by several families but he keeps running away. Tim gets to check on his house, but is already demolished. The orphanage services put him inside a prison where he kept regretting his silly decisions. Meanwhile, Linda is buried in sorrow and decides to leave the city. Before she could, she found a cat along with Tim's hat. 
Linda can't hold back her emotions anymore and gets into the orphanage to rescue Tim. They reconcile and sneak out of the orphanage. The service officers keep following them and they won't stop till the Willoughby's parents return. With a heavy heart, Tim suggests bringing back their insensitive parents. They borrow Melanoff's factory and build an airship based on the Barnabas' design. Before taking off, Linda decides to cook some oats. Melanoff and Ruth help her too. They look like a perfect family. The Willoughby's don't want to affect their happiness and decide to leave by themselves. Meanwhile, their parents climbed up the Alps and got frozen by the bone-chilling wind. The Willoughby's can't see them, but they recognize their mother's knitting yarn rolling down the mountain. They follow the yarn and find their parents. The innocent siblings use heaters and lights to warm up the frozen couple and succeeded. They confess what they did and request their parents to come back with them. They might not be a good family, but they're still a family. These words coming from the adorable kids can make a stone cry. But the selfish couple push away their children and ride on the airship. They fly away leaving their kids to die. The harsh winds are freezing everything. Before giving up, Jane wants to sing her last song and let her siblings know how much she loves them. The Willoughby's hug and freeze together. Does the story end in such a tragedy? Nope. The Willoughby's still have some luck. Linda and Melanoff have come to their rescue. They want to make the Willoughby's a part of their family. The kids can't ask for more. They can finally get the warm home they always yearn for. And as their biological parents fell into the ocean and got eaten away by sharks, Linda applies for adoption and becomes the legal parent of the Willoughby's. Family is not just about being related by blood. It's about the love and care we give to those we hold dear, even if they were once strangers. We don't need fancy words or complicated ideas to describe the power of our emotional connections. It's the simple things, like a hug or a kind word, that can make all the difference.